Uh, all right, everybody. So we, uh, I'll call the meeting to order. And uh, let's just go around the room and everybody say their name very quickly because we have a, a bunch of guests tonight. Hi, everybody. Welcome. You're more than welcome to scoot down this way so you can see it's better. Not that we're anything to look at, tonight, but you are welcome to scoot on down. I'm Ellis Jacobs. David Turner. Al Schleter. Kate Hamilton. Lisa Krieger, member of council. Oh, John Hefley. Bill Randolph. Beth Louise. Beth Crandall. Okay. And my understanding is that Judith Hefley is on the phone. Is that true? She is in that little box. She's in that little box. I told you she was not allowed to talk. I'm not allowed to participate. She's just listening. She can't participate. Okay. All right, so she will not be participating. But it's she good she's listening. listening since the microphone's not. <laughs> we don't know if it's working. We don't know. Yeah. All right, um, has everybody had a chance to take a look at this agenda that we got? Uh, any changes people want to make to the agenda? Okay. I hope we can talk about the council actions or inactions, if you know, appropriate term on it. Which is on there. Uh, which would be under where? That would well, be the updates on mayor's court recommendation number three. Or yeah. uh, under uh, some updates on council actions. I mean, I, that seems to be where. It would okay, I'll come. put an in in front of actions. Okay, alrighty. Um, and I also also want to address a um, email that the members of this commission or the task force received from Matt Raska. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it's kind of citizen concern. Yeah, well, let's deal with that. Where's that one? I didn't get that. I'm not sure. I think it came late. It came at 6 o'clock. Yeah. I don't see anything right. wrong with it. It's not a priority sending this document up to council okay. with a couple of recommendations. All right. So are people comfortable with that approach? Well, I, I, okay. I used two of my. John, I'm sorry. We, we did listen to you. Yeah. No, but thank I, you. I, Please sit down. Please sit down. We're going to move on. So we'll come back to this. We'll get to the priority discussion. If it's not a priority, then we will do just what we said, which is we'll take our information, we'll pass it on to council, we we'll say this is important, but we think you have to invent another group to move the ball forward. Is that, am I right? Okay, correct. Yes. Um, then let's move on. Uh, anything else from the police working group? Thank you very much. You guys did nice research on this. We appreciate it. Data analysis group? Talk about nice research, man. Uh, yes, so first of all, I'd like to apologize that this wasn't first presented to JSDF before it got presented to council. Um, it was not ready before our previous meeting. Um, a lot of that just had to do with the fact, like, you know, had to make one, one last records request. Oh, wait, didn't get all the information I needed for that one. Need another one. Oh, no, I didn't get uh, one more. So it was, that was a little bit of the end. Just so, it. But the methodology here uh, doesn't use any statistics, didn't do any statistical testing. So I think technically we like didn't quite need like committee approval to go forward. And I hope that y'all, and, uh, and we talked about the fact that we were working on this. So I hope y'all aren't offended that this ended up getting produced. Which, which, which this oh, I'm sorry. So, this, so I'm talking about the citations uh, court report, which is at the very back of your packet. There is one page before it, and then basically goes seven pages back from the, uh, the last page of your packet. And you should right. Forward. And so, John, is, do you, I mean, are, can we just cut to people line. asking you questions about this report? Would that be all right? Yes. Um, so, well, let me just tell you what it is so you know what to ask questions about. Um, basically, this is building on the um, like violation groups analysis, where we broke down what the different uh, types of citations that the committee was using, and then uh, looking within those categories, uh, we're looking at what uh, court they were assigned to, whether that was um, mayor's court, uh, the Yellow Springs Traffic Bureau, which is also local here in Yellow Springs, and the handles parking violations, or um, the the uh, Green County yeah. Juvenile Court, uh, which of course there's no discretion, things that no, are sent there have to be sent there, or Xenia Municipal Court. Um, and, and, and so it's yes. page number five where you can really, I mean, it's like technical for you, basically, except you yes. black and white, am I right? Yes. That's 2017, and then you've got an aggregate of a number of years on the following page. 
right. Yes. 13 to 17. Yeah. And yeah. the bottom line is what? Yes. And then there's also, there's also this page that you can see there. So the 2017 shows you the today's practices, basically, or last year's practices, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would say that the chief would deny that, I guess. That's <laughs> the short answer. Yeah. Can, can I add, a, a, I, John, you know, put that out without, uh, I, I have an addition uh, to put uh, to, to the report. I think it's hard looking at all these graphs, uh, all these, uh, these tables and things, but I, th I think the, one of the real significant things is to look at the percent of the cases that go to mayor's court compared to uh, all of the total, because that's what the mayor's court is addressing. And you'll see that when John Doherty was chief, it was 80%. And it is true that under our new chief, there's been, for the first time now, there's a, an increase in the percent, but I would also ask you to note that only 40% of the cases uh, in the in the of the of the, all the cases of the adult, I took out the juvenile, they took out the truck, only 40% go to the mayor's court. So uh, I get frustrated with some of the uh, the the, uh, the village manager says most of them are going to the mayor's court and. And the chief says that it's not true, and uh, we need to. And it, John did a beautiful job to get the data because you, you can't, you can't, uh, if you don't have the facts, you can't uh, deal with it. So I just wanted to share that. And and I mean, just to add, to pile on with praise. Can you handle it? <laughs> uh, 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 for it, I mean, by breaking it out, like you have disorderly conduct. There were 11 instances of disorderly conduct that went to Zania. I mean, what for? Right. You know, if, if there's any kind of case that should be handled here locally, you would think this orderly conduct would be it. Especially and Marianne McQueen. <laughs> As one example. Well, uh, Her maybe got to say this. Well, yeah. but, uh, but, you know, but you've got like, uh, littering, <laughs> obstruction, you know, a variety of, of kind of, sort of just like things that obviously have mayor's court written all over. Uh, and so, you know, I think the breakout is very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to do other than just present? Uh, no, if, if anyone has any questions. Okay. Any questions, Ben? Any other questions? I was looking at one of your previous reports, John, which was listing the same kind of a thing over the six or seven year period, and I found it interesting that there were half a dozen uh, kinds of things that there seemed to be a lot of recidivism uh, going on. Uh, and I, that seems to be, you know, the, to me, one of the values of Gurry's kind of data analysis is to see where to, what to look at and what to ignore. You know, and uh, so license and registration, insurance and drug possession, OBI, you know, disorderly conduct. There were you know, like 64 out of 200, or out of 145 people, which is you know, all, more than a third uh, recidivist license, registration, insurance things. So I. For whatever that's worth, there are a handful of places where it seems like some people just can't seem to keep their license in place, can't keep to stop drinking and driving, well, can't stop selling liquor to minors. Um, so I'm just throwing out to the group it might be useful to take, you know, looking at all this data, find some places where some specific actions you know, can be taken. Um, um, I, I should note that that data, that report, um, it didn't distinguish between if you got a ticket in, um, like, 2013 and then another one in 2014 versus uh, your license had been, for example, suspended three times by like the same court or different courts. And then if you're pulled over driving, that's actually driving under three tickets. Right? It's, three it's a, yeah, well, just, just, yeah, you know, so they're like, yeah. yeah. There's, yeah, there's, a, there, there's, there's, there's one instance that. of, you know, dog barking in the night, right. you know, over a seven year period. Let's not pay attention to dogs, but, you know, a lot of people still don't. And alcohol to minors, let's pay attention to that. Right, and then similarly for drug... we got 5,000 data points, let's only... Right. The for, for the drug possession category, if you were stopped and ticketed for uh, drug possession, but also drug paraphernalia, then that would be two within that category. Just to clarify. But yes, any, any other, any questions or comments from uh, um, anyone else? Anyone in the room? Questions or comments on the data? Okay, well thank you very much. It's terrific. I think it's really helpful uh, as far as helping us. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Corey. I'd just like to thank you all for coming here and 
doing this. I know you've been working on it for a real long time, and it's great. And uh, I'm really glad to be allowed to be here tonight and be a part of this. So thank you. Sure. Thank you. Could I make a comment on the data? You know, I was shocked that you didn't want to make a comment. <laughs> well, I, I commented at a council, but <laughs> so maybe it would be helpful here. And again, thanks, John. Again. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at the consistency with which we, we seem over, if you look at the four years of data, that there has been a policy about charging, and it's often, don't send it to mayor's court. Mm -hmm. Just like you look at the disorderlies over four years, 53 of them, and none went to mayor's court. So somebody's getting a message to somebody about how to use discretion, and it's not to send them one direction. Um, uh, again, same with the drug charges. We have so many categories where they all went to Muni Court. Um, the, what I call the the worst offend, offending categories for pretest tech stops, tail lights, and illumination of rear license plate, uh, two lighted lights display. How many of those went to Mayor's Court out of 58? Uh, tail light illumination of rear license plate, 58 went to Muni Court. None went to Mayor's Court. And 23 on the two lights, 23 on the um, So the pretext, potential pretext stop ones all went to. So again, if we bring them here, then our, our mayor, and then there's more local awareness of what's going on on those cases. Um, there were so many of these are traffic, and, and you know, the concern about there being victims is really um, a baseless concern because so many of these are traffic things. And I guess the last thing I want to just point out is the, I think, some of the most politically charged crimes like obstructing official business, resisting arrest, fleeing disorderly. Again, those sorts of things uh, all went to me. Thank you. Yes, okay. I, I, I've been waiting for some opportunity to put this in. I've been frustrated by this group. I suggested that we bring police officers in occasionally to talk to us, and that no one has acted on that. So I, one on my own, went and, and talked to some police officers. I, I bring it up because it's very relevant to what uh, Laura just said. I mean, I wondered why all these cases are, are If this is a mayor's court thing, we'll, okay, we'll, we'll do what we did with the mayor. There will right. be a report about the mayor's okay, court. Okay, all right. Well, it, Okay. Okay, I'll wait. Buddy. Is that okay? It's it's okay. Buddy. Okay, I'm gonna to want to deal with it properly, right? Okay. Peace. All right. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, anything else on the data analysis? Yeah, this. <laughs> well, I guess it would be mayor's court as well. But if you're gonna send people, one person to speak on it, and then everyone else speaks against it at this council meeting, it's a very embarrassing situation to be in, and I. I much rather have the people who are um, in these subcommittees to go because that was uh, very disheartening to go and speak on this. All of this came up, plus the chief came in. Uh, I consider it a disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, we'll come, can we come to that in a second? Okay. Yeah, right. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if that's under mayor's court or mayor's. because a lot of data analysis was used to make sure it was, uh, yeah, well, I'd like to get. I'd love to speak on that. Uh, we will. We'll do that. Okay. Uh, disparate impact on the four subcommittee. Do we have a report from that? Uh, that was Judith Allocate. We don't really. This month. I met with um, the outreach specialist and the sergeant now and discussed some of this, but it's still in the process. Okay. But I just want to say that tracking this, that the interconnection between this data and the mayor's court and an initiative to go after disparate impact on the poor, to me, are inextricably connected with each other. Yes, I know. Right. You know, and, and so it's tricky for me to separate them out. Right. And I think it all comes down to this data and the Court. score. This is my opinion. Okay, anything else on the disparate impact on the poor? The poor? No. Okay. Then the surveillance issues, uh, um, um, Bill and Steve and I have worked on this, and we have something that we want to that we're putting in front of the group tonight. And it looks like this. Okay, you have three documents. You have an actual proposal of an ordinance that we're 
suggesting that this group propose that the village council adopt. Okay, and then there are two documents supporting that. One is this item here, community control over police surveillance, guiding principles. This is just something from the ACLU sort of talking about the, the policies behind this sort of thing. And then this uh, more deep, this longer document that just tells you about the technology that most of us don't really know about. I didn't even know that there really was something called an X-ray van. I mean, the light bulb. Light bulb. Yeah, light bulb. Yeah, <laughs> so, and this is all stuff that really exists and is in use somewhere in the country. Uh, so it, it illustrates, and if you've been following, if you read the New York Times about each Sunday for the last several weeks, there's been a full page article about some police department using some kind of technology to surveil their people. Uh, one was about the, scat, the, the gunshot detection thing in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. This week was about uh, surveillance cameras all over the place in Baltimore that civilians can now tap yeah, into. You can go online and watch, watch their neighbors. Watch your neighbors and report down the movie. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so and, it, and, and, yeah, uh, and let me just add this, uh, and that's what we know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some other stuff we don't know about. Yeah. So, so the idea of this proposal, this proposal is, is not an ordinance that uh, opines on the validity of any of that technology. What it says is that our police department can't adopt any of that technology without coming to council with a proposal saying, this is what we want to get a grant to get. This is what we want to start using. Here's how it works. Here are the implications. Here are the rules that we will, you know, that we're proposing we use it under. And council has then a right to say yay, yes or no, or change the rules for operating this stuff and do it this way. I'm going to be recommended to council. Second. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, this is the right way to do it, actually. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> we have a yeah, now we have discussion. Now we have discussion. Okay, can the motion be reviewed? We have to, to amend it five, six times, too. The motion is that we recommend this to council. Perfect. Okay? So, Beth. Uh, I thought this was a great document, and the questions that I had as I read through it, I was just ticking them off, like, okay, it's here. The one thing that um, I didn't see in here uh, is a question about surveillance by other entities and agencies that occur that could occur within the village limits. So, like the SEI, the county, the county, the state, the feds or whoever else. But but I wondered, maybe that's a separate yeah. Yeah. set of issues and recommendations. Right. It just came so to mind. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we would have jurisdiction no. over sure. any other body that actually has jurisdiction in the village, which would be just about everybody listed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if they come in with their own x-ray van, if the FBI is looking for the x-ray van, okay. you know, All right. uh, okay. we're not going to be able to tell them they can't. But this says that we're not going to do it without, and it also says that we cannot collaborate with somebody. We can't have, we can have a contract with somebody yeah. to do something that we couldn't do on our own. Right. Yeah, we, probably should, we probably should define somebody. Pardon me? We probably should define who somebody is. Yeah. Just, and just thinking about that, is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Lisa. So I am absolutely inclined to support this, but something crossed my mind, and this that I've been, I kind of say every once in a while, it comes up at council, about the importance of having policies set by council with the police, is that everyone, you know, I've been here, not everyone, that's, that's a real generality, but there is this rhetoric of, oh, we have a great chief, and everything has really changed, and it's all better now, and what I say is, okay, I don't want to even get into that discussion, because administrations change. So just because you know it's the sun is shining, the birds are singing right now, we need to have policies to prevent you know things going in the wrong direction. So then it also crossed my mind on this point that councils turn over too. And so it basically this, as you're proposing, puts it in the hands of the council to decide about surveillance. The council is also a bureaucratic, you know, a, it can turn over and have a different perspective. 
So, I mean, I'm inclined to approve this, and I think the council is the government, you know, of, of Yellow Springs. But um, I just, I'm asking myself, does it go far enough? Okay. I well, don't know. I mean, that's certainly a good point, but I, I hope you would agree it's, it's the right first step. I do, I do, but, yeah. you know, I just it crossed my mind with this particular yeah, There's issue. a real difficulty in actually, you know, making rules that would apply to these sort of technologies because they change so rapidly. Mm -hmm. And that's why this approach, I think, is the approach that folks that are concerned mm -hmm. about this are taking in the country mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's you know, and the main, the main prophylactic effect of this is that it has to be public. they got to come and say, we want to do it, right. here's how it works. You know, here's the brochure on it, right? Yeah, here's and there's yeah. continuing yeah. reporting on it. Yeah. I really like yeah. that. Well, and the council's conversation about it's also public. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that, yeah. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody else around the table before I call on Corey? Anybody else around the table have a comment? Yes. Yeah, John. Um, uh, so, um, for one, I guess I'm mean, just where uh, surveillance technology is defined. Since At the very end, you know, it's the last couple of pages, and it goes on and on and on. It's probably the longest part of the document, which, okay. because it has to be defined that way. It has to, you know, you have to really be both okay. comprehensive and specific. And then my other slightly nitpicky um, comment is that I saw, of course, that the surveillance issues group had a report. But I didn't see that you guys had a proposal on each other. <laughs> so in the future, we all have proposals. Just please like, also have that on the agenda. Uh, Thank oh, you. Thanks oh, for another sorry. Uh, okay. Any other any other comments on on this? Any other discussion? So the process would be that if we vote tonight to do it, then we notice it, and then people have a right to comment, and then we get to vote on it again because well, we like the rule that. Okay, well, uh, you know. I, I'll confess that <laughs> well, I haven't totally read it, but does this does it include public records access to things like um, camera footage that's, I mean, the things that are allowed yeah. are then in some way stored, or is there something about how long they're stored, where they're stored, yes. who yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then, uh, Corey, I think you wanted to say something? Just briefly, I have a question. Um, all of this technology is new to me. But I'm wondering if you have information on the police's use of paid informants or undercover officers in our community and how we feel about that, whether we should use them or not. Uh, you know, that's really sort of outside the purview of this. So if you don't okay. mind, we're going to start. Okay? Thank you, though. Um, all right. Human, uh, human technology. Human, human, human surveillance technology. John, are you focused on this? Yeah, I mean, I would say that that's, that is a, under your, um, but it's not under your proposal. Okay. okay. Well, I I do think that it's a very valid point. I I just like to suggest that you know this this um, this young man has come here um, and you know he's he's maybe not familiar with the process of um, Robert's Rules of Order, uh, but he has made a very uh, important point that um, hopefully the the task force can. Um, can consider even even if um, the you know meet the community where the community is. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further discussion? We've had a motion. We've had a second. Does somebody want to call a question? Call a question. Okay. Um, wow, man, it's really vote. Everybody ready? Yeah. All in favor? Right. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Can we record that as being unanimous? Did any any abstentions? John, because I haven't really read it. Okay. Okay, so let's report it as that. So then here's what happens. Is <laughs> we have to put this in the newspaper, all right? Okay, and here's what I would propose, is that basically the two paragraphs you see at the top would be our notice, with one sentence added that describes what the heck tech surveillance technology is. Okay, is that all right with everybody? And I've drafted that sentence, it's somewhere here. It says, uh, it says, uh, surveillance technology includes, but is not limited to, automatic license plate readers, stingrays, video surveillance cameras, and predictive policing software. Okay, so it gives it to you. Is, is that a fair way to do this? For those who don't know what surveillance means? Uh, well, to give some people some examples, some ability to focus on why we're talking about it. Okay. okay. Um, I guess. 
Could we include like just a tiny URL that would link to it? I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, like a URL, like a link to this? Sure. Yeah. Because this is such a great infographic, I thought. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. No, no, I agree. Um, those, all these documents are supposed to be on YSO.com because they're part of the packet. Yeah, yeah. I but guess I, I, by putting it in the notice, maybe more accessible. people will know to look. Where, I, but a URL to something. To something. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about to the ACLU? Well, I, I was thinking to the ACLU, but your point is well taken that it is in the pack, so we could point people back to the pack, and then they would find this, yeah. too. Yeah. So. Well, we should well, yeah. on the pack it wasn't uh, yet. Not yet, no. Well, we'll be by the time it's published. So, not true. Yeah. Now, who, who handles the mechanics of actually getting this notice into the paper? Judy. Judy Kenner. We've already done this before. Yeah. So, so I, I so should Patty. contact Judy and tell her we're... Well, Patty, because okay. Judy's out. All right, I will do so. But there is somebody stepping in for Judy, so there's somebody there who could do it. Yeah, Dorothy Smith. So if you do it via email to start, yeah. send it to Judy's email, and yeah. then it'll get picked up. And I, I can send you a lot of time. Yeah, versus picking up the phone. Well, I'll, I'll call somebody, yeah. But if you, I got like the six people. I probably will. Yeah, it'd yeah. be easier to email. Just that. another yeah. point. I, I was shocking to me that. We didn't have the police department respond to our notice and comment uh, regarding the uh, mayor's court. Yeah. Well, can we just say that we're ready for the mayor's court report? Well, wait, no, no, no. That? The point is, how can we can we ensure in some way that they respond to this? Uh, I don't think we can. Not, yes. We can't. I don't think we can. So Let's move on to the mayor's court. Wait, on. actually, can I ask? Um, we do have a, uh, you know. Recommendation development guidelines. Um, so, did you cons did you ask for feedback from the police department regarding this? Uh, yeah, I actually communicated with the chief. I didn't ask him to give me ideas on the actual thing, but I told him what we were doing, asked him what kind of technology he was already using, so he knows what. He won't be surprised. Uh, I wish I'd moved to table. I really wish that I did. John, we're done there. with that part of the conversation. Sure. Now, ready for the mayor's <laughs> core report. Okay, so we've been. Putting things on this basket, and now we are ready. Uh, I think so? You sure? Yeah. Who's going to talk about the mayor's client? I, I've been very quiet, <laughs> and I because I've been anxious to get so I I was appalled at the action, the inaction of the council. The council created this to come up with with uh, with proposals. That one specific thing was the mayor's court subgroup, which has worked extremely hard. I was on it for a while, and David and uh, Laura and people worked extremely hard. They create this, a lot of research was done, a lot of work went into it, and then what do they do? And we, we bring the, ma the mayor in, and she, and we, she says, well, give, us six, give me six months. We put the six months in there, and then I think it was very dis disingenuous of her then to come and say, well, not only do I, do, I want six months, but I want, don't want I don't want the council to do anything for six months. And, uh, and then the police got the proposal, and they had the opportunity to give us input, input, and they didn't do anything. So I, and then both of them stand up, and the council. Only Lisa Keegirl, everyone out there, she was the only one that said this is not ha does not have anything to do personally with the mayor and the chief. It has to do with the policy that to make sure that we don't have things happening like happened before that created we there, we New Year's Eve incident and things. And and I was particularly upset that Marianne McQueen, of all the people who experienced this firsthand, uh, she, she uh, uh, basically, they just said whatever the mayor and the, uh, the chief uh, says. Is, is up. Now you go on the one thing, other thing. I've been wondering why so few cases go to the mayor's court, even though we keep being told that the things are going to the mayor's court. So I've been talking to police officers, and I have to be careful about what I say here. But 
the, poli the, the, the police officers, there are two categories. I, I put the police officer in two categories. A very small category is police officers that have Yellow Springs, what I call Yellow Springs values. And then there is a larger group that are, have this police academy mentality, a very punitive, and this, and one, one of the officers who is, I say has Yellow Springs values, is now, it has been demoted, and he has had to hire uh, a, an attorney, because he is, be, what, let's, let me get the term that he said, uh, he is being put on some special, um, where is it? Uh, he's been put on a performance improvement plan. Now, he says that this is just a, a is used to get rid of, of officers. That if he does anything wrong, he can be dismissed with, without cause. And he's had to retain a, an attorney with a huge sum. And I, so I tried to find out why he was being singled out. And there were two incidents. But it appears like he has a lot of support in the community. He's asked by the high school to come and talk all the time. And it seems like these very, these officers that have this punitive mentality don't like this and they're trying to get rid of him. Well, let's stick to the mayor's court. How does okay. that connect to the mayor's court? So, but it, it relates to the mayor's court. Okay. Because the, what was the argument against going to the mayor's court? officer discretion. The officers that, uh, that these officers that are punitive do not want to send things to the mayor's court because they say the mayor's court is too lenient. They want everything to go to, down to Xenia because they feel there will, there will be stronger penalties. So the new officer uh, was assigned to a Yellow Springs Value officer and he, he was coming around but then he was assigned to one of these really tough guys, and he is sending all of his cases to Xenia. Uh, a couple other officers send virtually all of them. So uh, this problem is not going to go, this is not going to improve. Uh, and I, I, it, to me, it, it, this is, it's just sad that the consul uh, takes the word of the, police, the right. chief. And I, I, I want to say, hang on just a second. Do you, mind, do you mind for just a second? I know yeah. Steve w w tr yeah. spoke to this point earlier and I cut him off, so I wanted to call on him back and then I'll go to you. Is that all right? It's fine. Okay. okay. So. Hey. He talks a lot. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I don't want to He's the only one who's on the Bears Subcommittee. Why let him talk? Steve? The mind is more to do with just, um, there was no way to prep for that. There's no, it was just a very embarrassing scene to come. <clears throat> with the concept of we voted on this, we've agreed on this, to then attempt to speak, yeah, against the mayor and the chief themselves, as well as uh, others who also had disagreements <laughs> with it, who took it directly to council. It was, um, my, I just have more of a, I would rather not be put in that situation. Again, uh, with the concept of having a spokesperson go and speak, um, it looked extremely unprofessional. It looked very um, uh, chaotic, disastrous. It looked like we had, it looked like we scrambled, the, uh, even though we've been working on it for way more than months at this point. It looked yeah. like we had, right, it looked like we just wrote it the night before at 4 a.m. It's how it, it came across, and with such a backlash that could have been brought up well before uh, the council meeting itself, uh, I was almost lost for words, and how disastrous that went, especially when I had two people who were clearly the experts on the subject, ready to go right behind me, and were also sort of left with a but maybe you don't know what you're talking about. Or these people clearly, we have to go through them first, as if we had it. It, it looked really bad. And it's just a terrible place to be in, uh, personally. 
I'm not sure how others felt. Well, so you did a good job. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Pat, I cut you off your turn? Well, I'm probably just going to repeat it. I thought it was all very embarrassing and infuriating. I mean, it's sort of like we've been working for, as you said, years, yeah, and we've a very clear vote on this. I wanted to see us do a very strong presentation, and I felt, I don't know, David, it felt like you were backing up a little, but who could blame you with the police chief and the mayor speaking against it, and the council, including our own liaison, um, being not as strong as we needed, I felt, or needed to be. So I think when we're ready to go to council, we're going to go and be there yeah. and not have to, you know, back up like that and waffle and, yeah, yeah well, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. <laughs> we had a clear vote about this. So when we have that and we're all strong about it, let's do it. David, did you want to talk? I did. Okay. I you still did. want to talk? Oh, oh yes. Uh, I, I went through you know, a lot of different thoughts and feelings about it, and I finally decided to come at it backwards, uh, sort of from the end, because sometimes you know, it makes more sense that way. Uh, and I, too, at the time, was you know, frustrated with hearing all of these people, as you guys have you know, mentioned, suddenly come out and say, oh, I don't know, wait a minute. Um, and some of it seemed to be to be, well, we got to worry about providing services. And I, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think that that's a that's a canard. You know, the number of services and jail time and whatnot that come out of mayor's court. My sense is that it's about nothing. Uh, maybe maybe you know one, but that's that's not the big issue. Once I came at it from a different angle, that backwards angle, I thought about what it is that you've gone through. We've made this recommendation now twice, and it's the same one. Right. Uh, the second one, as I said in the meeting, you know, said here. Therefore, be it resolved, but it was the same recommendation. So people, all these people had time. All these people also, the previous time, had agreed that it was a good idea, and they were already doing it. And I went back and I looked at the videotape of the council meeting, and all the people were saying, oh, you're going to do it. And that's part of this increase, not as much as we would like, you know, but at least that's going on. And I understand and agree that the people who are involved in implementing something should be involved in the planning of it. I don't think that we should say, here, here's how to do your job, screw up. Uh, that doesn't, it doesn't make for good implementation. We had three recommendations that I think all go together as a piece. You know, sending everything possible to mayor's court, having a public defender available for indigents, and creating a diversion program. We, and I invited, you know, Pam to our first, you know, the, the first meeting we had as a subgroup after she got elected. We had a great meeting, talked about all these things, shared them with her, you know, our idea to ultimately make this recommendation. Uh, and so I, I also talked uh, after the meeting uh, with um, Ann Portina, who's the council or the mayor's court clerk. Uh, and so apparently, even though we haven't made the formal recommendation to council about the indigent public defender and the um, diversion program, the people, the people involved who need to be involved in doing it are working on it. So I would say, we're done. The message we sent to them is we want you to do those, look into doing these three things and you go come up with something. They're doing it. Now, there was some rudeness in not coming to us sooner. You know, there was some dysfunction in, you know, and I'm also annoyed that we voted on specific language for the resolution, and then it was changed by a council member before or after that fact. It was a minor change, but the process bugs me. You know, if we vote on something, that's the language that should go to council, I believe. That's a side issue to mayor's court, but no matter what it is, if we vote on language, we should, we should be presenting that language not have a council representative say, oh, I think I want it different, which is what happened this time. Um, so again, they all have agreed at one time or another, police chief, village manager, uh, et cetera, that this is a good idea, and they're working on it. And uh, Pam and company are coming up with it, working on the diversion program. They're talking to the public defender. Uh, I talk to the public defender's office. Well, before we get into that, so wait, that's on the agenda. I know. I'm, I'm just saying, all those, we've, we in the subcommittee had all these things go together. We've said to the council, you should go, you know, go forth and do this, and they're doing it. So I would say we can declare victory and say, knock off the crap that you did here and there, uh, and be a little bit more supportive and respond more quickly, and I'm done. 
if you want some help from me, counsel, come you know come talk to me. Um, but there's nothing more that we can really say that would be useful. That's my view on it. So, David, I think you sort of teed up what I would hope we will address now, which is so how to move forward. Okay, so but, you know the count. Something happened at the council. We fleshed that out. No, no, we, we didn't like. Hang on, just a second. We didn't like that. And so I would suggest the question for us is: So what do we do about that? Do we continue to work on that recommendation, or do we say we've done our bit, council? You've heard from these other folks. Figure it out. Uh, but go the ahead. Letter is my recommendation. I got that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, I, I agree that it was embarrassing, and that the chief of police um, certainly could have uh, communicated uh, his feelings about the recommendation during the notice and comment process. However, I also feel like part of this responsibility uh, for the situation, um, unfortunately, does fall on the working group. Um, I, I mean, they in their presentation of the recommendation, at the March meeting, um, they specifically stated that the chief of police supported the recommendation, um, but they didn't disclose that they hadn't discussed uh, the recommendation with the chief of police since their earlier version for 2017, which uh, didn't affect police discretion. Basically, they, after they shifted from being like, from uh, the, um, I, I, I sort of raised this actually at our April meeting when I asked um, the Mayor's Corps Working Group whether you guys had um, consulted with the Chief um, since the fairly substantive shift from let's ask counsel to ask the police to try to throw more cases to Mayor's Corps versus the current recommendation um, that removes police discretion. And um, they, they hadn't, and they didn't really jump to uh, Dis disclose that. I mean, as they, as Dave said, clearly they thought that the change, that the shift wasn't substantive. Um, but I guess I feel like you know, had the working group been more proactive, um, possibly they could have um, extracted the um, department's concerns and uh, sort of done some of the process within. JSTF before sending it to council. So it wasn't just such a sort of surprising disaster that couldn't be prepped for. Um, I'd just like to add a little bit more uh, context. Um, back in early 2017, I happened to be meeting with the chief about another matter when I asked him whether he supported sending all citations to mayor's court. His initial reaction was, I completely agree. You know, more, more cases should be sent to mayor's court. But when I asked him a follow-up question, so would you support sending A, B, and C to mayor's court, he immediately clarified, no, nothing like that. Only W, X, Y, and Z, those other things, are more properly handled in municipal court. And you know, this, I think this clarifies, you know, first of all, that the chief never changed his mind. His position has been consistent throughout. Um, secondly, you know, the, the chief is eager to appear agreeable. Um, he, he was basically trying to tell me what he thought. I wanted to hear initially. Um, however, I think through de detailed follow-up questions, it is possible to extract from the department their actual position on a matter. Um, so the further context is that immediately after I had that conversation with the chief in early 2017, I immediately sent uh, an email to the mayor's court working group, asking them to do more or less what council has now asked JSTF to do, telling them, quote, I understand that Chief Carlson wants to require certain cases that can be sent to mayor's court to be sent to senior municipal court. In other words, there's a difference of opinion between the working group and the chief of police. Could the working group please explain the difference of opinion and more fully defend its recommendation in light of this? I believe this is a necessary part of the committee's duty to exercise due diligence in its investigation in order to help village council make informed policy decisions." Unquote. The mayor's court working group simply replied that I was wrong, that it's not true that, quote, the chief wants to send some cases to Xenia that can be heard in mayor's court, unquote. Um, they also said that they were quote, meeting with him tomorrow to get a list of what can and cannot be heard there, and we'll find out the specifics, unquote. As it turns out, the list of things that can be sent to mayor's court, that legally can be sent there, that emerged from that meeting was very short, and it didn't actually include everything that can be sent to mayor's court. But anyway, we don't need to go over that again. Um, in closing, while discussing your proposals with stakeholders, I guess I just urge the group not to just immediately take yes for an answer, to try to like clarify, re record, dot your I's, cross your T's, and sometimes, you know, verify and double check. 
Um, in other words, use your good good judgment to strive for diligence. And I'll try to be clearer when raising this place. All right, thank you. All right, so now, now I, I hope we're at the place where we have, we're have we ready to decide how we want to go forward on that particular proposal. And I, it seems like there are two options. One option is that it sort of, you know, it bounced off the thing we, you know, it didn't go in the hoop, it bounced back. Do we accept the ball and keep playing with it, working on it, trying to massage the proposal in some way, or do we simply say, we've done our thing, you know, council, decide how, you know, now it's now it's your ball to work with. But council sent it back. Us. No, I mean, they, just, they just didn't accept it. No, no, it's yeah, they did. They did sort of um, yeah. here do something and Fix come it. back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we don't we have to work, Laura, continue to work. So work on. Pardon me? We hear from Laura, who's done so much work on it. Well, I, I want you to address that, that process question. Process. Okay? I, or, I think council sent it back. That's my, how I okay. felt. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, not with much, you know, clarity yeah. and gusto, but... Yeah, well, and I would suggest that, you know, just because they send it back doesn't mean we have to keep working on it, uh, you know, if we don't want to. Laura, go Great. ahead. So there, um, I'll get to that. Philosophically, this is very similar to the Citizen Review Board recommendation. There's been a philosophical bent of the subcommittee that we send council something that says this. Everything that should come to mayor's court should be charged there. Everything that can be, should be. Go forth, council, prosper, and figure it out. And you've got staff to do that. You have a solicitor, you have a village manager, you have a chief, and you have a mayor. Let them figure it out. That's been the bent. And that's why, John, we don't necessarily prior work with them because we're giving a policy direction that they can work on the details. That's why they have staff. Okay? Similarly, we can say go forth and prosper, do a citizen review board council, ordain it, and then appoint somebody to figure it out. Okay? I spoke to Brian Housh after we're reading the tea leaves of that council meeting is um, understandably difficult. So Brian Housh's take was that if we are so inclined that we um, take the very good work you did, John, and take that this list of offenses and figure out which ones you know, no brainer, should go to mayor's court, tail lights up, go to mayor's court, you know, never go to senior. Okay, and then figure out which ones perhaps that we have jurisdiction over, maybe perhaps there's a reason sometimes it should go. Couple that within the policy if an officer makes that charging decision that there's a form they fill out that has one sentence, why did you do that? You know, something like that. So for example, you could argue victim services are helpful any kind of personal injury thing, like a, an assault. But it really, do two guys in a bar fight at the Gulch get services? The answer is no. So we have to go through it one by one to figure out which ones really at any discretion at all. I think it's going to be a small group of offenses. So if we're so inclined, we could keep working. We could sit there. Brian suggested a meeting with Lisa, Judith, Patty, Pam, Chief, us, and work it out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I, I think you do have this choice between keep working and no, no we're done. <laughs> Council have fun with this. Uh, and I would, you know, let's try to move to a decision which of those we want to do. <coughs> well, I'm frankly tired of having said very clear things to people who then raise you know, ridiculous side issues you know, and then want to come back and back and forth and back and forth. I mean, this is not complicated. This is not complicated. I've talked to over 50 people in the community and I've said, here's the recommendation. I say the words and I say, why is the council reacting to this? This is not complicated. It's not complicated. And council needs to either decide to do something with it or not. And if they want to do something with it and tell other people to do things, those people can come back to us, and I'd be glad to work with them. I mean, as Laura says, we can go through the list of misdemeanor lists and bar fight or uh, you know equipment violation that should it go here, should it go there. But you know, we're we have a long list of much more important things to deal with. I would say the, the council and the company, you know, the Pam uh, and the, the mayor's court people are going off and doing stuff on their own. So no matter what we say, these people are going off and doing what they want. So I'd say, fine, let them do it. They know where we are. If they want to talk to us, be glad to have more conversations. But I'm tired of it. 
Bill, my sense is that you have a question about our, our ongoing process tonight. Uh, because you zipped your, your thing up there. We've got to go. And no. To we, to we, 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 and we were scheduled to go to nine. So let us let me just ask the group how, you, how we want to handle that. Uh, ten to uh, And so we've got uh, this conversation. We've got mayor's core recommendation number three. And we have the priorities thing. And those are things that we would like to get to tonight. Uh, do we want to soldier on? Do we still have our forum at the beginning of yeah, we would. Uh, so are people comfortable with soldiering on? Are you guys comfortable with us continuing? We trust you. Okay. Not till 10 o'clock. Yeah, okay. So why don't we tell <laughs> ourselves we're going to be done by 9.15? Is that a reason? Yeah. i got to be up early in the morning and work myself. Uh, okay, can we try to everybody's ever I mean, I self do so i got to talk to China. Are we going to try to do priorities? Because We're going to perhaps try to you do could it. write yours down on a piece sense. of paper and leave them. We're not, we don't know that. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally confused about what the prioritizing process I wasn't that well, last meeting, well, so. Let's, let's just, uh, we will let you guys go if you got to go. We will, we, will, we, will, we will do what we need to do, and we will promise ourselves we're out of here by 19. Okay? All right. Okay. Thank you for coming. Nice to see you. Sorry, Sean. No, no. No, not this second. Uh, I think Lisa, you had your hand. Yeah, and I, I just want to acknowledge the amount of work that that went, you know, into all this, and and acknowledge the just kind of sense of exhaustion, like, you know. However, um, I I do think that what is needed is a sit down that includes the stakeholders, because although it may on the surface seem compli not complicated, apparently it is. And we're trying to change the culture of policing, and that may be an incremental process, not a big bang. And so I, I would have a, a great appetite to sit down in a room with the people that Laura mentioned, everyone there together, and do the work collectively. And I think, I think that's maybe what you know, didn't happen before, and I don't think that's the fault of this task force. I think they didn't join in the process. Who is a, who's on the mayor's uh, <coughs> subcommittee? David, I know you were. Laura. I was, but yeah. yeah. Laura. Cindy Powell. Cindy Powell. Powell. Cindy Powell. Cindy Powell. Cindy Powell. Cindy Powell. Cindy Powell. Cindy Powell. Huh? And Al was, too. I was, was. Okay. Right. Uh, so. Well, I mean, I, in some ways, does it kind of come down to whether the people on the subcommittee have an appetite for a continuum? Right. Well, I think, I think what you're suggesting at least is a good idea. My, my view is. We have said it and said it and said it, and it's the, the, the general idea is, is simple. I agree with you. The whole implementation is complicated. You know, Pam comes to our meeting and then goes away and then does something else. Uh, you know, not to pick on Pam, but that's picking on Pam. You know, and so those other people, I want them to come to me and say, we want to meet with you, instead of saying, oh, well, what about this when I come and make a recommendation? Yes. Yeah. We, we, we've done it. You know, they, if they want to do that, you know, you or somebody wants to tell them to do that, that's fine. I'm, I've already said, we've already said that to them, and they're not coming to us. So, but, just shut the fuck up, John. Whoa, 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 David, David, that's, no, not, a, David, David, that's not appropriate. You came, David, you that's came, not appropriate. Yeah, I got that. You came, and you, and you stabbed us publicly, and continued to make a recommendation, and now you're doing it again. So, you need to either participate in the task force, or as a member of the group, or not. Okay. That was really unnecessary. Is there something you want to say to John? I did. Is there something <laughs> you want to follow that up with? No, he's, he's okay. already he's a huge right. Okay, I wanted to give you a chance. Okay, so uh, very quickly. Steve? Yeah, go Just the chief's only point, by the way, was that all of this information that was gathered was not under his administration and that we should only judge what he's doing now, which is a terrible argument. And it still has nothing to do with policy and what needs to be recommended. Right. The fact that that got an applause as though it meant something, as though he had some sort of point was just as I, I was utterly upset that that, that was able to, to fly as a needed statement that he could give that made some sort of like, oh, well, yeah, good point. It wasn't. It wasn't at all. And I just couldn't, and I was really upset 
that council is really giving this sort of head nod. Not Lisa, well, Lisa, thank yeah, you. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa thank Lisa you. What's like to both of them who make these yeah. sort of outlandish? Well, we're new, and it, it was just like I couldn't believe they were getting away with. I, I, yeah. And so I just want to make that clear to, to try to talk about the chief as though he made some sort of point. Did not at all. So let me let me yeah. try to synthesize what. And if I don't get this right, then I'm going. Okay, let me just so right. Here's what I, what I think we're at, and honestly, I, if I was in the position of the people that had worked on this proposal, I would be among the people saying, forget it, I'm done, I'm out, thank you. Uh, but here's what, what I think we could be at, is that what we would say to the that be, is that the subcommittee is willing to continue to work on it if you guys organize yourselves and come to us instead of a meeting with us. I like that. I mean, is that, so we're willing to do it, but you're going to have to take the leadership yes. to make this happen. Is that, is that sort of? Yeah, that's, yeah, this, that's what I'm hearing. Okay. And so, Beth, did you want to? Can you the, move us forward from there? Yeah, so, the, the, I guess the one thing I want to say is, um, the commission of this task force is to make recommendations about policy, and and that's why I would advocate that we do not just let it because they're off doing it anyway. Um, you have developed these recommendations, they're well done, they're solid, they should be put in front of council and council can vote them up or down. But enough of this mush stuff. So does that go against the what I no, propose? it doesn't okay. go against okay. that. All right. You're talking about the other, and so we're talking about the other recommendations, the mayor's court limit is you're talking about yeah. the yeah, yeah, mayor's court. Okay. Now, John, yes. keep it in mind yes. that we have 15 minutes to wrap this meeting up. Um, Do you have to say what you're going to say? It's to the question at hand. Okay, go ahead. Um, sure. Uh, so, um, I think, as I said before, I've been pushing the, the committee, and now I, I attempt, I'm attempting to push JSDF in the same direction that Lisa's is saying that folks need to sit down with someone from the department that's, you know, authorized to speak on their behalf to go through, I think that the proper way that you would do it is you would start with, the, the easiest way to do it rather, would you would start with the violation groups and see if there's any, uh, see, like start the conversation at that level and then possibly deep, dig deeper onto the charge statute level about like what things that just understand what the department's position is on each thing. Do you feel like all of this sh can just always go to the mayor's court? Do you feel like none of this should ever go to the mayor's court? Do you feel like officer discretion is necessary for this? And then get the re and then document the reason why. That's that's about. So I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. I wanted to deal with the. Pro we need to we need to wrap up our process. How do we go forward? But oh I, yes, I, I do want to say though yeah. that the recommendation is coming from the committee. So it's, it is actually our responsibility to steward it, not the department's responsibility to steward it. Okay, it but there's a certain level of frustration. No, people no. don't want to be chasing people around to but, get them to work with us. What they're saying is, if you want to work with us, come find us. You know where we are. Uh, and that's what I'm that's hearing. That's how work happens. And that's a legitimate, yes, thing to, that's a legitimate position to take. It is. <laughs> I agree with that. Okay. So, Allie, you're nodding your head. Lisa, you're raising your hand. Raise my hand. So I hear two options, right? One is to send it back to council and say, the Justice System Task Force made a recommendation and you need to decide, are you taking that recommendation or not? You heard from the mayor, you heard from the chief of police, are you taking that recommendation or not? Yes or no? If they say no, then, you know, I, it, my question is, are you asking council to say yes or no before you take that next step to have that sit down and work it out? Because if the council says no, I'm not comfortable just letting it drop altogether. If the council says no, then I want to say, okay, let's negotiate another level, and this is what, like, the approach that Laura said. So the question is, do you need the council to say yes or no on your proposal as is, or can we move forward, led by council members, to try to convene a group and work this out? I think it's, in my opinion, it's fine to go with that. My point was, eventually, 
we need to put the recommendations in front of council and council goes yay or nay. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying that has to happen before this meeting takes place. And it would probably be more productive, I think, mm -hmm. for the meeting to happen. Well, we put the same one in front of them twice. I know. And, and councils dither all the time. They so, dance. I mean, I, I agree with you in, in general. That's how it would be nice to work. But it hasn't worked. Okay, Al. And, 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 okay. You know, Somebody the, bring us together. Put they, something out there. We're going to decide. The, the proposal was put in the newspaper. It was sent to the police department with a request that they, they give input. Uh, and they chose not to. Not a single person. So. Right. How many times so that's something that could be discussed at this meeting and is a that. point that should be made forcefully. I think. Oh, okay, so uh, again, let me restate this, and I want to see if there's a strong objective. So we will communicate to council that the group is willing to continue working on it, but they need to take the lead at convening the, the, the people who they think are the correct right. people right. to talk about it. Right. It, is that where we're at? Right. Yes. Uh, okay. uh, you oppose it. Okay. And John, I'm not going to call on you because we, we, we just got to Yeah, no, no, I was just saying that, that I'd like to talk to you. Who does that? Okay, well, uh, that I would think it works. Somebody, is there somebody in council here? Yeah. 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 I, I don't think it needs to be a formal one. Great. It's not a decision. Lisa, mm -hmm. will you take that? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it. Okay. Because yeah. I, I mean, I understand I didn't, uh, you know, Brian approached Laura. Brian did not approach me. I'm sure it's sunshiny law kind of stuff. So I'll make sure we get with Brian and work it out. Okay, very good. So do you Thank have you. the authority to just not take public comment with, when that's the structure? Uh, yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, I, don't think, I don't think that, that that's been agreed upon. So uh, after we're going to keep moving. Okay. But, but that, that, that's, that, we have a structure for, for, for political, in that in for public comment. And it so has been agreed as, as a group. Thank you. And, yeah. and, and if you're going to undo yeah. that structure, then... So the next the point, point of order, Sean, is correct. We yeah. did formally adopt a policy that we would hear public comment. Yeah, but we don't have well, to hear everybody on the agreed with the public comment at the beginning. And during the discussions later on, we decided to take public comment. You have your village council member right up here. Let's not talk about it. Let's just go ahead. Three minutes. I think that you guys are doing good work, all right? I think that, that you guys are on the right track, but I think that the, this this is a crucial to be addressed, and that is that, um, like, who is in charge of who, okay? The civilian government is not supposed to take orders from the police. The police are supposed to take orders from the civilian government. That is a crucial component of our democracy, all right? I remember... Uh, Chief Carlson, before he was chief, when he was intern uh, chief, when he was in this room and he said all of them, he was standing right where I'm standing, he said all, all of them would go. I think that they should all go, I totally support it, something to this effect. And so as a civilian government, I think, and, and it goes to the heart of what we're talking about with police accountability. You know, if, if, they, if he's going to take that position in one minute, he should, you know, he should be taken to task for that. You said that this, that this, that you think all they all should go, and now you're telling us something wrong. You're jerking us around. You know this. This is what we have been working on for a long time. And if you're going to meet with the the police um, to draw this up, I think it's important that you you don't forget that what your role is. Your role is not to take orders from the police on what you should adopt and what you should recommend to council. And and you might need to remind council of that. You might need to remind the the mayor of that. That actually. The civilian government is supposed to be in charge of the police. This is crucial for um, democracy, and so you know if you can just please keep that in mind. Um, I I would definitely support you guys um, just putting it to council. I think you've done a lot of work, and if if it if it votes, you know, and, and talk to the the individual council members ahead of time, brief them on, you know, that, that it is crucial that Carlson did say that originally that he would he would go for this, and. Um, you know, and we really think that this is a good idea. And can you please consider voting for it? And then put it to them. If they don't go, if they don't go for it, then yeah, negotiate with the police. Try and figure something out so that so that council can get behind it. But that's that's crucial. But also, okay. what well, you know, what we're talking about with uh, setting up a police review board. If, if we don't have the police review board, we have the mayor's court. Then we we will continue John, to have right. these sorts of issues with the police. All right. Okay. So we. Lisa, you know what the 
will of the group is, and you will communicate that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should, should we take a vote of support for your proposal? Or? Well, I think, I don't think we, need to we, need to we all agreed on it. We all agree. We all have consensus. Yeah. consensus. Yeah. Does that matter anymore? I want to keep moving. Um, so, so look, we've got ten minutes to wrap this sucker up, and we've got two things we've got to do. One is the mayor's court recommendation number three, and the second is the priorities. How do people want to proceed? We've got to put up the priorities. Yeah, yeah priorities. We'll another time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is that is that the, everybody good with that? So we're not I'm going to do the priorities. Well, <laughs> do you want well, to do the favor of doing no, it? No, no, because I think Pat was confused about. Uh, the process of it, and we have two members missing, so I guess that yeah, makes sense well, not to do it. Yeah, everybody, correct. Yeah, please keep in mind that this particular group that we're in has a shelf life, and the shelf life is right. coming up very soon. Yes. I'm not sure the exact date. I've always operated in my mind with October as the date, which is I think when we really got rolling. Uh, I think we were actually commissioned before October. Yeah. September. Yeah. September. Commission first year. Right. Third September. So we do need to be cognizant of that. Okay. I mean, we'll probably go towards the end of the year. Yeah. Maybe so, yeah. Okay. But that so, does have something to do with priorities. Right? Oh, okay. Um, so let us. I guess I'll move that we should do priorities, given that I think a number of the people who spoke during citizens' meetings. I mean, they're here. Okay. Well, we can only do one of the two things. Yeah. Priorities. So, I mean, especially since the time mayor's party justice. Oh, uh, yeah. Is so, recommendation number three willing to? Are you guys comfortable with the, the, yeah. off? the recommendation yeah. number three isn't yeah. actually in the packet, so yeah. I haven't okay. had a chance to review it. Okay, then let's. I, I, I didn't want the folks that to work on that to feel like they got. The recommendation is that, that there be a diversion program. Okay, guys. Uh, then we're going to talk so about priorities. So if you would pull out your priorities document and. I'm like the world's worst person on dealing with these sorts of things. But what is suggested at the top is, so everybody, here's the priorities discussion document. And it's a long list of stuff. And I suppose the list could be longer, it could be shorter. Mm -hmm. But this is the list we're looking at. Uh, and it is suggested that people, like basically vote for three, I think that's sort of what we're that saying. That was what we that agreed to last time. Okay, okay, thank you. That's after I left. All right. And so, to, how do somebody who's better at organizing this kind of thing suggest how to proceed? This was Dave's idea at the beginning, so I think he should lead us through this. I did have one suggestion about modifying this list, which was items six, seven, eight, and nine are all about mayor's court, and Dave has made the point in this group and publicly in front of council that this is a system and these are all interrelated, and so I think those should be considered one item. I strongly support that and was going to make that recommendation as well. Okay, so, so six, seven, eight, and nine will be called uh, Mayor's Court. Mayor's, Mayor's, Court. Mayor's Court, yeah, right. Uh, reform. Okay. <laughs> or something. It's like better that. than stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, would, it be, it, would it be in order for me to respond to that? No, come on, don't we got to just move. Okay. Uh, I mean, so then take a look at this. Are there other things that seem to be that are really out of order here? I want to highlight for folks that the one thing we've been talking about a lot here what is you mean the, out of order? You mean inappropriate to talk about? Yes. That was the question. Whether it's appropriate for me to respond? Well, <laughs> no, I'm just trying to move this forward. Have any want. of them been accomplished? Some Are of them ready to take off yeah. and say we already did this? We kind of called the list last time. Okay. These are policy. Um, so yeah. worker. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And I just want where where do we find the uh, the police review board? Which number is that? That, in my view, comes within number ten. Does everybody agree on that? Okay, good. I just wanted to highlight that since we spent so much time talking. Exactly. Okay. All right. That just says research. That doesn't say advise. I mean, it just says to research best practices and such, which we've already done. It, it doesn't really say to push for an advisory board or something. Well, advise. Let's add the word advise, okay? Is that okay? Everybody good with that? You know so instead of research best practice, it's more like advise regarding and advise on how to proceed, okay? Okay, so that would cover the advisory board. And okay, so John, before I cut you off, uh, you want to opine on why six, seven, eight, and nine should be combined? 
Um, so I think the eight and nine should be combined. Um, yeah. And I'm okay with six and seven kind of being combined. Like that doesn't bother me particularly. Um, eight and nine are essentially the prosecutor's office. I think that that's a fairly complicated matter that likely will take a long time um, to complete. And I'd like to, I'd like us to work hard on establishing what the prosecutor's office will look like, what the, what the uh, diversion program will look like, um, and also maybe talk a little bit about our views on um, prosecutorial priorities. And I think that all of that will take a lot longer than the relatively low-hanging fruit of um, determining which misdemeanors can just be sent to mayor's court and providing a public defender for indigents. This, that's, the, that's the entirety of it. Is it six and seven or one? Also, I'd also, like to note that council specifically stated that they only wanted to hear one recommendation at a time from JCF. All we're doing is voting on priorities. The things that oh, we're just blocking, focus blocking on. Them. We're, blocking. we're focusing we're blocking. on these things as this task force. I retract my objection since I scored all those things being on top. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, all right. You more than one at a time that way. <laughs> you get three. Uh, okay. You get three. All right. So, um, all right. So we've got our list. We six, seven, and eight are combined. Is nine in there too? I don't really. Yeah, six, seven, eight, nine. Six, okay, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, those are right. That's right. one. Ten is about the police review board advice on how to proceed, not just research. And uh, we're ready for. Um, and has this group discussed the implications of not prioritizing aspects of the village council resolution? Just curious. We went through the village count all the items in the village council resolution at our last meeting. Right. And said this one has been addressed by okay, Scott. It's okay. already yeah, don't that work. So okay. Yeah. I just am wondering, you just say, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. So, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This uh, is a lot of agenda items to cover in the meeting tonight. Well, yeah, we're not going to discuss each of them. We're just going to... No, but I mean just the agenda thus far. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so do we want to have a brief period of discussion where people make a pitch for one or two of these things? We've got two minutes. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Can I make a suggestion to combine some of you? I, I actually think um, 10 actually is out of a commitment from the Village Council Resolution, which is uh, here in 1-3... At least, if and possibly others. Mm. Uh, okay, but uh, so we're, we're not going to have to be okay. So let's we're going to move to a substantive, very brief period where people advocate for one or two of these things before we do our we cast our our lots. Is that? I would, I would, I would suggest, Ellis, that you know, that, you know, make two passes. Everybody go through and uh, you know, vote on vote on their top three and then see what the numbers are. And because very quickly about five or six things are going to show up as, as key and nobody's going to vote for number you know, 27 and so we can just ignore 27 and then do it again. Yeah. People comfortable with that? I mean, this is not a science, it's just whatever you're comfortable right, with. Right, so I mean I, I, I apologize really to the group but because I wasn't here when you did this. But I see the point that number six misdemeanors to mayor's board is related to number two exercise and the role of police officer discretion. It, it is. I, it, I, 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 you know, I, I agree that advising on um, collaborative groups, advisory boards, and police review structures is related to um, both village council one and village council three. I think it's a it's a it's a gimme that this group is going to focus on the elements of the resolution. The question is, how are you going to do it? And to me, some of these other ones are the how are you going to achieve these resolutions? Okay. Do you, I mean, does that make sense? What I just said? Yeah. I mean, you're basically illustrating the fact that we're not ready to have the word out. Okay. okay. And so, what I did was take the list from the council resolution uh -huh. of 2016, and then I asked working group leaders to send me mm -hmm. their goals slash task activities, and I just dumped it all yeah. into this yeah. document. And I don't want so to derail the process. So things are not process. necessarily parallel. Yeah, I don't want to derail the process, but I do see that they do map to each other. Yeah. And you want this list to be short right. before you multi-vote on it. 
And it's hard too because some of the groups are working on it. They have working on this group. So the suggestion is that we include this one the next time too. It's having successfully uh, <laughs> filibustered our 15 well, minutes. Well, but is there a way, is there a next step where, where that kind of mapping could happen in a visible way? I think I, I mean, is that, does that make sense to help the group prioritize or? I, I think if there's, there are natural link, linkages, but mm -hmm. that happens in the work itself. Yeah. And all we're trying to do is say, we have like six months maybe. Yeah. And which things do we want to focus our time, attention, and energy on? Because mm -hmm. we can't focus it on all of these and move them forward. We can move all of them forward this much. Right. Or we can take a few of them and maybe really make a difference. Right. Well, I mean, just as an example, eight and two to me seem to overlap. Well, well, two, in my view, overlaps with everything. I would suggest so, we have this discussion the next meeting. Yes. But, but maybe what should happen... We can't do anything justice in, in negative two minutes. Right. Maybe, what, maybe what should happen is that a couple of people who have a bent towards this sort of uh, organization might give it a little work and then give us another document. Are there a couple of people willing to do that? So in other words, this combining and massaging would take we place all the time. Sure, wow. I'm out of pocket till the 24th. I'm leaving for a week at the end of the month. Okay, well, all right. We Why don't you work on it and yeah, send it to me? <laughs> you know, and I'll take it. Yeah, but we'll, we'll do our best. People will shoot it down and we'll come up with something Fine. else. Okay. Okay. So, so agenda, 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 those, some of the things that we've said uh, here with the uh, combined. Don, I have a, I have a call on Sean. Sean, I have a call on you. Thank you. So, agenda planning for July. Oh, yeah. Agenda, yes. We know that we have two things on the agenda two. for July. And, three. and those would be uh, the uh, recommendation number three and the uh, uh, priorities discussion, right? Okay. Is there anything else we know we want on the agenda for July? I think you want to discuss an ongoing permanent group. Or do you want to? Oh. Is that something that we yes. discuss? Yes, we do. Right? The ongoing permanent group. And we know that coming out of the priorities discussion, we need to make a decision on how we want to proceed on the police review stuff. So if, if there's a, you know, if it's one of our priorities, great. If it's not, then we've told ourselves that we will tell the council that it begs you pay benefit. Right? OK. Anything else? That seems the main purpose of the John, session. Well, was in John, order to maybe possibly throw, throw out the review. I would hope that uh, the uh, meeting that Lisa's going to put together would have happened by then, and we would be able to hear something about it. So yeah, what yeah, what yeah. what about we'll, we'll communicate through, I guess, Ellis. And let you know whether that's happened or not. No, nobody communicates through me. No, that's not going to you. Me. Okay. Yeah. We're, I'm going to make every yeah. effort to have that meeting happen okay. sooner rather than later. Excellent. Okay. okay. Do we have a motion? Second? To adjourn. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.